This is Chicago, the west side, a neighborhood bordered by Congress Parkway, Independence Avenue, Madison Avenue, and Kedzie, with its hub at the intersection of Jackson Boulevard and Fifth Avenue. At the turn of the century, this neighborhood, known as East Garfield, was one of the most fashionable in the city. Today, outsiders think of it as the heart of the West Side Ghetto. But the people who live here staff their own redevelopment organization and have named this community Fifth City. But I've been here since 1975. And when I came here, Fifth City was on the way. I just pitched in and saw something that I could do to help do whatever the community had decided to do. Now I know what I'm talking about. I just, just almost gave up. And I said, well, I'm in it. I just have to be in it, that's it. But I didn't know, if I had known at that time, I couldn't promise you the day that I would have been here seeing it. Now this west side at this time is really moving. But at that time, it was not and nobody want to be with a loser. I know I don't. So we look like we are winners now, and we can get people to join us. If you think the city of Chicago is going to change mayors every four years, and you happen to look up on a mayor that's going to come out here and do your work, he said, you wrong. When you go back to your own neighborhood, decide that if it's going to be better, it's going to be because of you. You're going to have to do it yourself. I don't care who the mayor is. If you don't see about your own neighborhood, it's going to be just like it was when it started. I started out kind of, well, I'll do this, but with not real hopes of seeing that it was going to really happen. And now I don't have that kind of feeling. I have put my life into it, and it's a life in building for me now to see that my children will have a future and give them a symbol that you can be whatever you would like to be if you put dedication into doing so. Sociologists identify four types of community, downtown, inner city, suburbs, and rural. But the caring people in this West Side Community Organization believe that there is another city, a city that deliberately nurtures and celebrates the human spirit, a decisional city, Fifth City. Ladies and gentlemen, give one more big round for the mayor, Harold. Everybody. <laughs> All right, I'm happy to be here. I'm just here on this joyful occasion to join with you as indication of what the Great West Side can do. This is one, just one small but important demonstration of the kinds of things that happen in communities when you have a group of core people who are concerned, vitally concerned, who marshal their capital, put their money together, who know where to go to get help to the city of Chicago, who have the kind of planning and development technique which is necessary, but above all, people who have a love of their community and who understand and appreciate and want to bring into fruition the idea that this city government is in partnership with the neighborhoods and the businesses and want them all to improve. How you doing on that bus? Right on. Right on. <laughs> like being mayor of Chicago. <laughs> but I want you young people to take inspiration from what's happening here. This is just an ordinary looking building, bricks and stones and mortar. Inside you got some inventory. But you know what's really here? This is blood, sweat, tears, ambition, and the fruition of a lot of people's work. You see in this building a work of love, not just for the profit, it will bring to the owners, but for what it can do to the community. That's what it's all about. I've cut ribbons all over this darn city. But ribbon cutting means nothing unless the people in the communities appreciate and work with what they're trying to do. Can I get a witness on that? All right. 
God bless you. Thank you very much. I just didn't understand what it took to do a project, almost a million dollar project. I just didn't have any idea. I thought all I had to do was go to the bank and say, I got $500,000. We need $112,000. The bank would just jump for But that's not, that's not the case. <laughs> I went to some banks and I told them, we'll give you the whole fresh mortgage of everything. Just let us have $112,000. Bank said we'll take a look into it. There is a built-in understanding that black people and ghetto people cannot function. They can't learn, they can't do things, they are just not expected to be achievers. And I think that we have been achievers. We have proven to the world, first of all, that we can learn. And we have proven to the world that we can redo our own community. We can shape our own destiny. Ninety-nine percent, forty-four, forty-six. <laughs> Jewel, is your goal today, Bernice? Fifty. Fifth City builds achievers through Fifth City Business Careers, a thirteen-week curriculum of job training classes that build skills, employability, and not the least, self-confidence. Fifty-four with ninety-nine percent. Let's let's give it. That's great. That is really good. Fifty-four with ninety-nine percent. You know, I ask, I say, well, well, what exactly are you looking for this type of position? Well, you have the skills and everything that we're looking for, but you, we're looking for someone with the experience, the work experience. Sometimes I just want to say, well, I can do the job if you give me the chance. Well, Lynette Brownlow. <laughs> Lynette worked with a quiet assurance that allowed her to keep at the task until she mastered it. Confident of her <laughs> typing skills, she began her search for a job and was the third person to be employed. Congratulations. In just four years, Fifth City Business Careers has trained more than 450 people and helped 70% of them find jobs. Fifth City helps people, partly by building positive self-images, helping them identify their interests and talents, and recognizing the opportunities available to them. Changing images is central to all of Fifth City's programs, for everyone from preschoolers to seniors. A lot of times you don't even know that you're committed until two, two or three or four years later, you know, that you're committed to something. Just by the uh, continuous, you know, the process, you know, that, the journey. It's a journey that you be on when, when you commit yourself. I know like, like when, uh, when I started, I did not, you know, began uh, involvement in the project for the sake of just being, you know, like involvement, you know. Uh, I was just doing something. And um, finally, I began to explore, you know, like all the models and all the stuff that we had began to, you know, build in Fifth City and then decided what part that I wanted to, you know, um, dedicate my life to. And it was the, you know, the preschool. Okay, here's another good picture. What room would this picture go in? Hey, in the bath, what? Oh. Bathroom. Why do you say that, uh, Jovan? This is the toilet, and this is a sink. What is this up here? What do you look into? A what? Mirror. A mirror. And the mirror has lights around it. This is a pretty bathroom, too, isn't it? All right. When you begin to teach the little children that I can do this, that self-respect and that self-reliance and that self-confidence, out of that grow a person who is concerned about their school, their community, their city, their world, and in the nation. And then they become iron men, believing they can conquer the world. While people are the primary focus in Fifth City, the physical place of bricks and mortar that forms their neighborhood also deserves attention. The Fifth City organization augments the environmental services of the city of Chicago with equipment of its own, such as a front-end loader and dump truck, rototiller and hand tools, Fifth City has rehabbed 144 apartments in recent years, as well as rehabbing the community center to include an elders' nutrition site building a shopping center which houses five new businesses and constructing the auto service center with a 10-bay garage and car wash. 
By creating the strong image of a community that is stable and unified, Fifth City has made it more attractive for outside investment in the neighborhood. For example, the recent construction of the New Bethany Hospital and CTA Bus Garage represent over $40 million of new investment and together employ more than 1,000 people. The hopes of the Fifth City Project were tested in 1968, following the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Only five years old at the time, the leadership core of Fifth City became even more determined to carry on its 40-year neighborhood plan and immediately started to rebuild. The citizens of Fifth City erected the Iron Man sculpture at the center of the community as a testament of their faith and devotion in their neighborhood. It stands there today as strong as ever its iron will drawn from the core of confident, dedicated people of Fifth City. We are image makers, you know, <laughs> and I realize that, and, and we are bringing on the young people. I have grandchildren as well as children, and all of them will be involved in Fifth City. Myself, for instance, and, and, and my business, people tell me, well, it will not work, forget it, but I was determined that this is what I wanted. Okay, I can't do this by myself. So all these people sitting around this table here, in, in some shape, form, or fashion, they have all helped me and inspired me. And Mr. Uh, Stanley here has talked to me many a time and told me, don't give up, just hang in there, we're gonna make it. And the fact that somebody's saying, we, make, you know, I thought I was all alone, but you, you go back and uh, he said, well, somebody's in my corner, so I'm gonna keep trying, so. Success does not necessarily mean material success. We feel successful in the fact that we have started from nothing and have come this far. We feel now that we can make decisions, wise decisions that's good for people. We feel comfortable with what we decide we want to do with the input of people from the community. That is a big part of what we do, learn to trust each other and talk about what you want to do and then do it. But you can't do it by yourself. That's the first thing you have to learn, that you have to have help. And people just don't want to do things by themselves anymore. They, they don't even want to try it because it won't work. You have to have people that's dedicated and understand what you're about. I find people that are willing to make a life commitment to what they were out to do. And someone has to keep the, the vision, keeping the long range vision in mind. And I think that that's what made Fifth City great, uh, the fact that we had a model and it was a 40 year plan, not a 10 year plan or a 20 year plan, but 40 years. And I can see from the things that's really happening in this community now, that it really will take 40 years. We're not somebody out here who wanted to demonstrate that some great company with a lot of money could come in here and do something. We demonstrated that we could do something with what we had. We also think that there comes a time when the demonstration needs to be over in a sense. And that fulfillment and doing this community be the key. That this become a viable community for people to live in so their hopes and dreams can be alive because History follows you, and our history will follow us like everybody else's. I will pass this way but once. If there's any good that I can do, let me do it now. Oh, I'll never pass this way. Many partnerships are formed by Fifth City among people of the neighborhood, but also among friends outside the neighborhood. Partnerships with government, private business, and other volunteer organizations. This illustrates how miracles are achieved by people power. People working together, both as a neighborhood and as part of a larger community of concern. When each of us offers our talent, our hard work, and our love, our reward is a new community. A fifth city, a decisional city.
Other communities in many places exemplify the fifth city principles of care for their neighbors of all ages. But few have this kind of organization or history of commitment to be a demonstration of what is possible anywhere. Fifth citizens have willingly shared their vision, their methods of commitment for over 20 years, and have directly influenced communities from around the world. This is a joy that helps sustain long-lasting commitment. But neither doing nor sharing can be done for free. Both commitment and resources are constantly needed to keep this demonstration alive.